For a while, I've wanted to make a video to showcase the applications of the Mini Radio Solutions Mini VNA. The other day, I was looking at uh, my parts shelf and I found this spool of coax that I've never used. Didn't need it as bad as I thought, apparently. Uh, I bought it, I think, at the Raleigh Ham Fest probably about 20 years ago for five bucks. The guy said, Yep, the characteristic impedance is 50 ohms. And I thought, I've never checked it. I might ought to find out. Well, there's about 800 or 1,000 feet on this roll. And from a lot of experience, I know this smaller coax with this much of it is going to have enough loss in the ranges covered by the mini VNA that we'll be able to read the impedance. And that's where this all started. I have the uh, VNA open. Uh, this is version 2.8.6F. Um, here are the measurements that you can look at on the sweep. Most of them are active on the reflection mode, which is what we're in right now. Um, you can select two, and they're obviously color coded. Uh, we'll look at SWR and um, reactants. Okay. Um, the the cursor travels along uh sweep it here travels along uh with the mouse obviously and that's the one spot the one marker uh, i've been able to find in this uh, early version mini vna which is um, th these measurements 46 uh, megahertz approximately 756 ohm reactants which is another thing to note to remember about this uh, device is you really need to stick uh, uh, probably in the inner two-thirds of the Smith chart. The frequency selection field is up here. Um, you can use an M or a K to designate thousand or, mi or million instead of entering the whole uh, range that you want to sweep. Um, and on the Smith chart, something is very, uh, uh, very important to remember about this version. Um, the this ver this version mini VNA does not show the react uh, the um, uh, sign for the reactants. You don't get a positive or a negative. It's just a reactance. And I think I can illustrate that a little bit later. Here it's a. Uh, is, is usual normalized to 50.0 ohm. Okay, and one more thing that's really neat about these, um, you can save any of these plots to a JPG. I guess that's a comma separated uh, uh, CSV, I guess uh, S parameter file. I've not needed those or had any use for them. Um, but anyway, they're, they're really nice plots, and it's something you'll probably use if you have one of these. In order to solder the 25, suspected 25 ohm cable to the mini VNA uh, input, I'll need to hook a small BNC 50 ohm cable with a couple of uh, sorterable leads on the end of the coax brought out. And we'll do the calibration. Read the open and it's ready to go. I have the cable connected to the mini VNA, the 800 feet of cable. I'm going to select SWR and the impedance. Ooh, that looks like two to one throughout just about the whole band. And the impedance, looks like it's hanging around 28 or 26 ohms. Well, it does start to climb through here. But this area indicates to me that it's probably going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of a 25 ohm coaxial cable, which I did not realize was a standard uh, characteristic impedance but according to Google there is such a cable made 
I'm going to use a quarter wave matching transformer to try to match 50 ohms out of the mini VNA into a resistor and I'll explain that in the next segment. Here is, here is how we'll verify this is a 25 ohm cable. If you look at the Wilford N. Carone book or the Radio Amateur Handbook, um, it describes making a um, impedance transformer with a quarter wavelength of an in intermediate uh, uh, characteristic impedance coaxial cable. And when you do the math and assume it's 25 ohms, then the, um, then the resistance that will match to 50 ohms should be 12 and a half ohms. It's just a random length of that cable, probably about 10 feet, hooked to my uh, VNA test jig. I'm going to plug it in and sweep it. Okay, and what we're looking at there, what we're looking at here is the quarter and half, wing, half wavelength nodes for up to 180 megahertz. Well, that's an awful lot to look at, so let's change that to, um, looks like maybe 30 megahertz will be plenty. And sweep it again. All right, as you can see in here, this X of S gets very low as this piece of uh, coax becomes a short at a quarter wavelength. So hunt through here, find the lowest impedance, and th the uh, phase will be 180 degrees, um, and that will be your quarter wavelength short, which is about 13.270 uh, megahertz. Now, don't confuse that with uh, the actual quarter wavelength. That's 13.270 is the length that 50, what, 53 point something would be a whole wavelength. And so we're looking at that. And I'm going to take it loose now that I have the, the uh, a quarter wavelength marked. Uh, sorter a 12 and a half ohm resistor, as I previously explained, or a 13 ohm resistor is a standard value that I have. And we'll look at the SWR and see what shows up. One other thing about this, <clears throat> if I go down to this point b before the first short or before the quarter wavelength uh, somewhere 3.044 megahertz and then you look at the Smith chart well, here here is that first point and if you look it's sh it's showing that it's inductive but my cable is open and so I think that a uh, first quarter wavelength is capacitive um, if the cable is open on a uh, uh, on a coaxial cable, so in, in reality, on a real network analyzer or hundred thousand dollar network analyzer, this this should be down here, the minus in the minus J region uh, for reactants. So basically, this thing travels back and forth, all in what we would call in the uh, uh, impedance mode of the Smith chart um, all in the inductive region so that's it's kind of a weird thing sometimes you can deduce that it ought to be in the other region sometimes you can't now I have on the screen the display of the 12 and a half ohm resistor at the end of the uh, confirmed 25 ohm cable now and if you look, it's 13.626. It's a little different than where we were, but it's right in the area. Um, we're showing a return loss of minus 37.5 dB, which 
this device will only do about minus 39. I've seen it. Uh, I think the new one supposed to go to minus 50 as far as how far down it can see return loss. And you look at the impedance up here, uh, 50.5, 50.6 ohms. So that pretty well confirms that this is a 25 ohm coaxial cable. And I'll look at the Smith chart. And once again, number one is where my marker was, and um, it's resistive at the <clears throat> normalized one, and no uh, no reactants to speak of either way. Now that we know it's a 25 ohm cable, what happens when you terminate it in 56 ohms, which is the value that I have? So it should be a SWR 1.1 to 1 with 50 ohm cable. Uh, what happens? I, I never really thought about this a lot, but I guess it, it kind of follows. The SWR, I selected it on both of them, um, the SWR at twice the frequency uh, as the what we call the quarter wave frequency is 1.03 to 1, a return loss of 35 and a half dB. And I think I think that's something that's good to remember about the Smith chart. <clears throat> is that a, the Smith chart is a half wavelength around? So if you start at a point and travel a whole distance around, you're basically back at the same point. You usually have a little loss. Um, but if you start at a point and travel halfway around the Smith chart, basically that number that's on the other end of the Smith chart is what your impedance now is. Um, you can look here, um, back at the quarter wavelength. Um, the SWR is four to one. So this is pretty frequency selective here, but it's kind of interesting that at this half wavelength, it really doesn't care about the uh, impedance of the cable. Now I'm going to calibrate this for transmission. And I have two rather long and clunky uh, LMR 400 cables in here, because what I'm going to show you is the response of a uh, Comet triplexer, which basically takes one antenna and sends them to three radios with ports at 1.3 to 90 megahertz. One port is 130 to 200, and one port is 380 to 500. And let me set that up, and I'll be right back. I have connected the Comet triplexer with loads on two unused ports to the Mini VNA. There you see that uh, on the high band port, which is rated 130 to 200 megahertz, it's showing about 0.59 dB transmission loss. Um, this Comet Diplexer just works amazingly well. I'm going to quickly lean over here and uh, Screw the load back in and look at the uh, look at the low band port. And as you can see, it works almost as well. Um, it's, it's hard for me to believe those lost numbers, but I calibrated the unit at the end of the cables, so there should be no cable loss included in here, but it's, uh, it's quite amazing, really. Of course, you can't do the 520 megahertz one with the, uh, uh, the 520 megahertz port with the mini VNA. Anyway, I, I hope if you decide to get a mini VNA, you'll find it as useful as I have. Thank you.